Okay, um, so Chisomo, first tell me your name and how, why you became a, a midwife. So my name is Chisomo Petros. I'm a midwife in Malawi. I work in a district hospital called Mangochi. So I became a midwife um, just following in my mother's footsteps. She is a very hard working woman. She's also a midwife. So my mother would work very hard day in day out on the weekends, on holidays, to make sure women get the care that they needed and making sure that they would survive this process at this critical time of their lives. So looking at her passion, I also followed in her footsteps to do that. But I faced a lot of challenges as a midwife. So like this other day, I was working in the theater and I was assisting during a procedure of a woman who walked in in our facility. So the woman was in need of a cesarean section. We started the operation, but electricity went off. So what we did was to continue the operation anyway because we cannot stop at this point. And although this was a very frequent occurrence, we did not have a backup generator. So what we did was to use the light from our phones, mobile phones, so that we continue the procedure. So in the end, we thought we had done everything correctly and we've sutured her well. But no, we realized that I think we left something because this woman later braid a lot inside and then died. We lost her. But on the part of the baby, the baby survived. But what we saw is that this baby did not get the warm embrace from a mother that most of us has shaped the lives that we are having today. Like just I said at the beginning, I went into the profession because I saw my mother. So we don't know the opportunities that we lost for this kid when she had to grow without this mother. So this woman was just one of those many women who are dying in our maternity ward. Most of the times women could come fairly late to receive proper care because of transportation problems to leach this facility. And mostly in the facility when they leach, they meet maybe one midwife because there is always critical shortage of staff. So only one midwife on duty, 24 hours. Maybe even working on the holidays, on the weekends too, just to cover up. And also, although this midwife is there, she's facing challenges because she doesn't have the vital supplies to provide care. But she really works hard to use the limited resources she has to provide the care that these women are in need of. And helping women survive. But many of them... The women are dying because this is not sufficient to rescue their lives, to provide emergency care that is needed in obstetrics. So as we know, death is a tragedy for the women, for the children who are dying, and also for their families, because they lose somebody who is very resourceful. Having a mother in the family brings a lot of difference. And it is also a very traumatic, traumatic experience. For me, as a midwife, my mother, and also many other midwives out there, I've seen how dedicated midwives are and how we're working very hard to make women survive. But because we don't have the opportunities or the environment that provide, enables us to provide the good quality maternal care, we're losing many lives. So, yeah, there are many things happening out there. Can, so that's what I can say. <laughs> maybe. Can you talk a little bit about um, what you think some of the solutions are and why it's important to have, why you pursued your degree and what, um, talk about that a little bit? Okay, so um, now I'm a postgraduate. Um, I did my master's degree in international health focusing on health system strengthening 
I did th I did this because at my bachelor I did midwifery and nursing. I was practicing and I was facing all these challenges like many midwives are facing. But I realized that things were not working out. Although every day we face the same challenges. So I thought that their policies being made, their strategies are variable, but Nobody is bringing it up that what we are really facing. A strategic and critical mission that a midwife do this at the primary level. Send this woman to a secondary level. But there is no ambulance. There are impassable roads. There is always blackout. You cannot resuscitate the babies. You cannot resuscitate women. So I saw all that happening. Then I said, okay, we need a voice out there. We need somebody has worked into the system to have a voice but I wouldn't be able to be engaged in those voices why because I was not one of those leaders and we don't have many leaders who are midwives or who have had this experience so that's why basically I did this training to have that so my proposed solution to this would be that the strategies we're making any commitments, any policy changes we're having, we should include the context realities that we face as midwives in providing care to women or to their babies. Because that's what is most necessary. People who are in practice can tell you the actual reality of what they're going through. If they tell you, yes, you made these strategies that in obstetric care, emergency has to go like this. But when you're making that strategy, you don't put in facilities like, okay, we need electricity. We need this equipment to resuscitate the woman. How are we going to maintain the equipment and everything else? So I, I thought the solution would be get the voice. Because whatever is missing from this policy, from this strategy, we can get it from their practice because they are the ones implementing the policies that we make when we sit down. So I think that's the most solution I can say. And also, most of these policies, um, the challenges that we're facing are not just based on health as the health ministry, but they involve other ministries as well. For example, I just talked about electricity. You talk about roads, passable roads. How can we get that? We need to integrate with other policies or other ministries, other sectors. They should know how it's impacting many people's lives if we have blackout. They should know how having a bad load to reach a facility without any bridge on the rivers and they have women to cross those rivers while they're pregnant. I think integrating maternal health care in many other policies, it can be very uh, vital so that we manage all these, some of these challenges. While we are also advocating on midwives' performances within the health system. Can you, uh, thank you, that was great. Um, all this has been great. Uh, can you talk about your research, uh, the research that you did as a um, graduate student and what your findings were? Um, you know, basically talking about that experience of care and what's really happening out there for women. Okay. So as a postgraduate student, you are also required to do research as part of the training. So having coming from the background, I knew I have problems that I have to focus on and address. So knowing that my system is not is really fragile and very weak, I thought um, I could get more informed when I asked the women of the experiences they have. Because from the midwife side of the caretaker side, yes, we always say about our problems, but Maybe nobody takes it up, but when we go through the women and they also tell us what they are experiencing, we integrated what midwives are saying and we can bring it up. 
So basically in my research I looked at experiences of women in maternal care in Mangochi district. So I was interviewing these women like one to one, very qualitative, hearing their stories about pregnancy, childbirth and postpartum care. So the results of my thesis, which I'll publish very soon, were basically that the experiences of women varied. In some way they were positive when the care is brought to them through outreach clinics, maybe because of many other contributors who are really helping that the care reaches out to the women. And also some during antenatal care where the women are really well received because they have some companion like a male being involved. That is being so much encouraged. But on the negative side, I saw that women had uh, unfulfilling experiences with regards to provider current behaviors. Most of the other things related to strategies that we have, policies. So for example, when you ask the woman about their experience in terms of provider actions and behavior, they'll tell you that, oh, they neglected me. I was abandoned while labor. I was left alone, all those things. And on the other hand, I, I also saw things like women were still delivering at home. And that was some of the experiences of some women. They're delivering at home, not because they don't want to deliver at this facility. They really wanted to, but they don't have the capacity to reach that facility because the loads are bad. The primary facility that can lift them to the secondary facility doesn't have any ambulance for them to get to the secondary facility. And they are poor women. What would they do? They choose for the cheapest way of doing it. They deliver in their own homes. So I looked from my findings. I think what I saw was that, yes, we can do more in improving maternal care. But when we look at the critical things that are causing bad experiences, we, th we see that mo most of these things are health systems related. The woman cannot say there was only one midwife. But when you probe or dig more from the woman, but why do you think she left you? They will say, oh, she was running around helping others. But they cannot come up with that, like straightforward. Because, and they cannot say, at this facility we have one midwife. Or the government only had put one midwife to save all of us in this village. But they can only see the impact it causes to them. Because for them, they are more informed. They rightfully know that the midwife should provide care. Should be with me throughout my delivery. It's a very critical time for me. So that's basically what my study looked at. And I'm very looking forward to publish on what strategies can say and the impact it can have on the experiences of women as well as the providers. Because we look at these strategies that will outline something about, okay, this is the proper care that one should receive. But we look at the impact it's causing because we forgot many things that are, who is going to deliver that care anyway? We forgot about that concept. So that's what I'm looking forward to. So when you think about uh, this concept of giving women, um, you know, treating them with, you know, giving them quality care, treating mm -hmm. them uh, with equity, um, equitable access to mm -hmm. care, mm -hmm. um, and respectful, getting respectful care and um, being treated with dignity. Um, what do you... What do you think the, the main barriers are to uh, quality, equity, and dignity in maternal newborn health? Okay, I would say there are many barriers to first equity because although we're talking about all these challenges, these are mostly common in the rural settings. So that's why we talk about inequalities because in the other setting, I would say the distribution of health workers. 
we have few lily pro being produced every year like okay these are the midwives this year but how many go to leach out in the places where we really need health where can we buy more health it is in this rural poor community so i think about quality and equity first when thinking of stuff good distribution looking at where can we have the impact when we do things but why don't maybe even if you allocate some of them there they don't go because the conditions that these women are facing are the same for this provider they're not provided with good conditions in the case of respect and dignity i think we should go through many things first i'll talk about at midwife's level from training side somebody is taught the light if we know how to provide the care what passion is how you should deliver because we're talking of care not just giving out drugs and giving injections that's care but having this passionate feeling about this woman making them experience have the normal almost the normal experience even in the difficult situations so for us to have that i think for the midwife side we need communication good communication yes we have challenges we talk about our frustrations all the time but yes there can be reasons because everyone can break out if you have that stress we are so exhausted we can say everything we cannot have control but we should always be mindful about how does the woman take it because she doesn't know what's the background about all your exhaustion and frustration so what i mean by communication is that if a midwife comes to the ward she's alone she had 10 women to deliver on this morning you say guardians patients or women and your companions i'm the midwife today I'll be the one providing care to you throughout this day alone. So I'll be learning from each one of you. That means I'll not have total time with every one of you. And that's the communication we're talking about. If this woman goes out, she'll not say the nurse was disrespectful. She left me alone. Because she likely know the problem at hand. We have communicated. At the other point, I say disrespectful is also lack of ac accountability of the health system people, the people who are leading the health system. Because despite that respect, dignity is only talked about between client, a woman and a midwife, but there was also a lot of disrespect from the people above, the people leading the health system towards the midwives or the nurses or somebody else in the health profession because if you entrust somebody to do some work but you don't provide the conditions to do that work that is already disrespect it's lack of accountability because everything that she's doing you are the one that should be answerable why did they not do this but the world out there does not realize this because they only look at the person providing care. But she was not coming to work with sutures, with electricity, with everything when she's coming to work. She's coming to the work with own objectives to deliver care. While we have, as a system, already enabled the environment for provision of this care. So I think the other side is about lack of accountability. And when the system does not respond to the needs or the requirements for care but gives you something to do and you face all the hurdles i think they're they're also not respecting what the provider should do so i think in both ways there's something that has to be done understanding being so accountable from the system side and the midwife also has those hurdles but understand that this woman here does not know whatever she's facing and it's only through good communication that the woman can understand yeah. so okay great
My battery's going, so why don't we just wrap it up? Okay. <laughs> okay, anything, any last words? Um, I think the most last words I, w I would say is that we need all these things to be heard everywhere. If changes are to be made, it's the leaders who should take up these voices up there and say them out when they're making their policies and strategies. So they should actually involve us in all their conversations, their commitments, their meetings, so that we can be able to exchange everything that we have. Thank you. Great. Thank you.